For years now, the media has painted a lot of misconceptions about marijuana, and they have also painted pot smokers as the hoodie-wearing slackers who either emptily stare at Netflix and snack excessively, or as these creative geniuses who credit their innovative ideas to all the cannabis they have been smoking. But now, the smoke is cleared, and it turns out marijuana has a lot of lies surrounding it. Today, we're breaking down 10 lies you were told about marijuana. Let's get started. Number 10. It makes you more creative. Whenever people talk about weed and creativity, a picture of Seth Rogen and James Franco always pops up. While these two are terrific artists, with or sans blunt, they're not the best example to end the debate whether or not weed makes you more creative. No, marijuana doesn't guarantee creativity, period. This is backed by a study in the Journal of Consciousness and Cognition. The study they performed actually showed that pot smokers outperformed non-smokers during one of two tests used to test. But hold on, they were sober at the time. So that spike in creativity is most likely related to personality traits rather than the cannabis itself. That said, smoking pot does allow its users to get clarity and new perspectives. Steve Jobs used to claim that pot made him feel relaxed, and comedian George Carlin called it a value-changing drug that could open up doors of perception. Number 9. Weed Kills Your Brain Cells For number 9, we're taking on one of the most dramatic lies that are told about marijuana. That marijuana kills your brain cells. Let's be clear, weed consumption does not kill your brain cells. This lie can be traced back to 1974 and to one Dr. Robert G. Heath and a U.S. government-funded study in which they had monkeys smoke two joints of weed every day for a year. Using a gadget wired to the monkey's brain, they concluded that the weed destroyed the monkey's brain cells. A similar study was conducted in 1990. Guess what? The weed didn't harm the brain cells of the monkey whatsoever. It's also noteworthy to mention that the same doctor also once claimed to have converted a homosexual into a straight man by zapping his brain with electrodes. So, do we really want advice from a man like this? Number 8. Legalized marijuana results in more crime and violence at number 8, we're debunking this popular myth, and it's that legalized marijuana results in more crime and violence. We can actually trace this myth's origin to Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who claimed that marijuana legalization leads to increased crime and violence in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. Adding to the hysteria of the myth was Sheriff Tom Allman of Mendocino County, California, who told Colorado residents after marijuana was legalized in November 2012 that thugs put on masks, they come to your house, they kick in your door, and they point guns at you and say, give me your marijuana, give me your money. His claims can easily be debunked with one look at crime rates in those states, and it comes down to the fact that legalizing marijuana doesn't directly affect crime rates, and the looser marijuana laws aren't behind any noteworthy rise in crime. Number 7. Marijuana Makes You Lazier and Less Motivated If Steve Jobs credits a lot of his motivation to marijuana, then we already know that the widespread lie that portrays pot smokers as overweight blissed out slackers snacking on Cheetos and sodas is a total falsehood. But what if we told you that studies have shown that a lot of cannabis users tend to be fitter, thinner, and more active than non-smokers? And hey, just look at all the successful people that have played around with weed at least once in their lifetimes. From Steve Jobs and Microsoft CEO Bill Gates to former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg and just, you know, former President Barack Obama. Number 6. Weed is Addictive one of the loudest arguments against weed is that it's addictive. It couldn't be further from the truth. So no, marijuana isn't more addictive than heroin, like some bogus studies or people have you to believe. There is a distinct difference between addiction and dependence. There's next to a 0% chance that you can become addicted to marijuana, but you can depend on it. But even the number of people who are dependent on it is far less than those dependent on things like nicotine, alcohol, and even caffeine. Even in the worst case, marijuana dependence is still a lot safer than the rest of the addiction. Heavy, heavy users have a 9% chance of developing an actual physical dependence on weed. Alcohol drinkers, on the other hand, they have a 15% chance of being diagnosed as dependent. Cocaine addiction is a 17% chance, heroin a 23%, and cigarette smokers 32%. The hard-hitting term addiction refers to a strong and uncontrollable craving for a substance that can even be harmful to you. And marijuana doesn't even have the same addictive components that are synonymous with the likes of heroin and cocaine. Number 5. Marijuana Has No Medical Purpose People are divided between wondering whether or not marijuana has a legit medical purpose or not, but the truth is, yes, it has great benefits. WebMD found that 69% of doctors back this fact, 
and 82% of oncologists and hematologists were in favor of medical marijuana. A New England Journal of Medicine study showed that out of 1,446 doctors from 72 countries and 56 states and provinces in North America, 76% of them support medical marijuana. Medical marijuana is prescribed for pain, multiple sclerosis, poor appetite, weight loss from chronic disease, chemotherapy-induced nausea, seizure disorders, and Crohn's disease. There's even proof that marijuana can help treat traumatic brain injuries could potentially help treat Alzheimer's disease. Number 4. All marijuana is the same Weed is a broad term, but not many people realize that. We're also told that any kind of weed basically just gives you the same high and the different so-called strains are just marketing gimmicks. Most street weed will get you high, there's no arguing against that, but there's more to it. Think of the difference between strains of marijuana like the difference between wine and champagne. A few glasses of red may lead to a relaxing evening while champagne may have you feeling more energetic. That buzz from these types of graphs is different in the same way cannabis strains are different. This is a blatant lie. The truth is cannabis strains are divided into three main categories – indicus, sativas, and hybrids. Indicus leads to that relaxing kind of body high that calms you to sleep. This strain also helps with pain relief. On the other hand, it's sativas that give you those energetic highs and relieve depression, fatigue, stress, and ADHD. Fatigues are a mix of the two. Number 3. Marijuana Can Treat Glaucoma We're changing things up a bit. Instead of talking about all the lies that are spread about the disadvantage of weed, we'll talk about a different kind of lie – the myth that marijuana can treat glaucoma. It's basically a group of eye conditions that damage the octave nerve by abnormally high pressure in your eye. It's one of the leading reasons why some people can go blind by the age of 60. Now, the common misconception that weed can treat this condition is not too far off, as cannabis does have an effect on patients with this condition. But cannabis is simply not powerful enough to be a notable treatment. Glaucoma is a condition that needs to be treated 24-7 with medications. So if someone was going to try treating it with cannabis, they would need to smoke it the entire day. And it still won't be nearly as effective as the actual prescription medication for the condition. Number 2. You can overdose from weed No. Just no. In 2010, a total of 38,239 people died from drug overdoses. 22,134 of those were killed by pharmaceutical drugs, of which opioid analgesics took the lives of 16,651. 25,692 people also died from alcohol overdoses. In fact, alcohol kills around 88,000 people a year from conditions like drunk driving accidents and liver failure. Among all these statistics, not one documented case of marijuana has actually killed anyone from an overdose. If we want to be technical, a lethal dose of marijuana would require ingesting the THC of about several dozens and probably hundreds of pounds of marijuana. The National Institute on Drug Abuse even came out and said it's not very likely that you can overdose on marijuana. That said, marijuana-related accidents or anxiety attacks can be something users can experience. So if the question is, can you die from a marijuana overdose? then the answer is a firm no. Number 1. Marijuana is a gateway drug For our last and number one lie that we're debunking, we're tackling the most popular and classic anti-marijuana argument that marijuana is a gateway drug. When people claim that weed is a gateway drug, it's because they have reached a point where they can't argue that it's addictive or causes any negative medical side effects. So they claim it's a gateway drug that opens the door to using more dangerous drugs. It's also believed that pot smokers build up a tolerance for it over time and chase that intense high by seeking harder drugs like cocaine and heroin. But did you know that some studies have actually proven that marijuana is effective at getting people off the hard stuff? The vast, vast majority of pot smokers do not eventually escalate to using harder drugs. In fact, a study in 2012 found that 31% of American students tested from different levels of education have actually consumed weed at least once before. And guess what? Only 1.8% of them have ever tried cocaine, and an even lesser percentage of them, 0.6%, have used heroin. A Drug and Alcohol Dependence 2012 review found that 83.2% of hard drug users in Japan have never actually touched cannabis. It's a fact that marijuana doesn't have any chemical component that makes it particularly dangerous. If people can ever call marijuana a gateway drug, it's because dealers are the ones pushing other illegal drugs on buyers. And if there's ever a dangerous gateway drug, evidence points to alcohol as the more likely culprit. And that's a wrap on debunking all the lies you were told about marijuana. Are you shocked about these facts? Do you have your own truths about marijuana? 
If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And before you go, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to Weeklypedia and click that notification bell to be alerted whenever we upload a new video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.